pleasure to introduce Mr. Yusuf Albanyan, the Vice Chairman of the GPCA and Acting Vice Chairman and CEO of SABIC. Mr. Albanyan has spent the majority of his distinguished career at SABIC, joining the company only 11 years into its formation. He's represented the company globally in an array of commercial positions, including heading SABIC's Asian headquarters in Singapore, where he oversaw the company's significant expansion into Asia, and in particular into China. Mr. Albanyan also sits on the board of several companies, including Yansab, Safco, the Royal Commission for Jebel and Yanbar, Murafik, and the Saudi Ports Authority. He's also an executive committee member of the Riyadh Economic Forum at the Riyadh Chamber of Commerce. Please join me in welcoming him to give the opening address. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I hope you have had uh, a very uh, fruitful day yesterday, and uh, I hope that I will be able to sit the stage for the second day of this important forum. Uh, distinguished guest, it's very difficult for me to address a fine people like yourself. Specifically, I have front line of my former leaders, Mr. Anijedi and Al Jarbu and Al Madi, and I think let's have a deal. If I do a good job, I'll take the credit. If not, they will be blamed that they have not trained me well. <laughs> In any case, I would like to set the stage for, for the second day. And uh, let me just also I wish you that you have a very constructive dialogue for the last day. And I hope today also you will have the same. Today I will talk a little bit about the challenges that our industry is facing and from different perspective rather than just from a producer point of view. Ours has always been an intensively competitive sector. We have always been export oriented. Unlike China or Europe or United States where they do have a market. To carve out a place for ourselves we have always had to work both harder and smarter. Economic conditions <clears throat> and structural challenges external to the industry are combining to a challenge the future competitiveness of the GCC petrochemical sector. We must work together to shape this environment or it will shape us. Today I would like to speak to you about those economical and structural challenges and of course, I will try to outline some positive steps that probably will help us to overcome them. As you can see, global economic conditions today are not favorable in general to our GCC petrochemical sector. However, for the industry specifically, the global outlook is strong. SABIC projects ethylene demand growing 3% annually between now and 2035. We in Middle East can grow our share of the market, but we will need to improve our competitiveness. I will detail some of this, the steps that we can take in a few moments. The big story for us, of course, is oil price. From an average of $99 per barrel, the price of crude oil has fallen around 50%. The lower price are likely contributing to the strong economic growth are we seeing in the advanced economy. And the stronger economy should stimulate the Middle East economy. That's by itself is a good news. However, it's offset by the fact that lower oil price are also bad news for us. For much of the regions especially, it will stress many of the local economies depending on their level of exposure. The cyclical pattern of our industry and market developments really highlight the downstream sector to the GCC more critical than ever. Oil price goes up and goes down our more significant challenges beyond crude oil price. We have structural challenges in nature, and it's where I would like to highlight. These challenges are threefold. The first one, fasting, 
fast-changing competitive landscape, increasing regional self-sufficiency, and challenging developments in the terms of national trade. I'll take them one by one. In summary, if you look at probably the most significant changes in our market has seen the latest decades in the U.S. energy developments. According to the review of the World Energy, U.S. natural gas productions in 2014 has increased by nearly 40 billion cubic meters. That was the largest increase in the world and the second largest in the U.S. history after 2011. At the same time, U.S. crude oil production rose more than 1 million barrels per day for a remarkable three years in a row. This spike in energy production confers considerable price side advantages to the U.S. via lower ethane and propane prices. Lower ethane prices and higher mix of ethane feedstock has improved the competitiveness of U.S. crackers. Right now, Middle East crackers are at the most competitive in the world, but U.S. crackers in shale era are no longer the highest cost producer. Instead, they are now the most competitive in the world outside of the Middle East. The second challenge is that we need to touch on is increasing regional sufficiency, specifically for China and U.S. And this structural challenge is it's increasing regional self-sufficiency in petrochemicals, specifically in the part of China and U.S. China will remain net importer of some of its petrochemical products, but it's improving its self-sufficiency in some key products that produce in GCC. These include ethylene, propylene, polyethylene, and polypropylene. In the U.S., thanks to shale boom, the petrochemical industry is growing quickly as a net exporter for a major pro petrochemical products. And this is, will change the landscape, specifically U.S. and China is the main driver for the industry. If you look at China, is the main growth target for all producers, specifically in GCC, and will continue, but keep in mind there are self-sufficiency strategy is built up at this point. And the U.S., instead of being targeted as also a market, now it's become really a very competitive exporter in the future, specifically for Europe. The third more important, this is a quite challenging slide, and I meant to keep it challenging because it gives you highlights how much the complexity we are dealing with. Export means trade, and in terms of trade matters, a great deal for us. Emerging trend in the world trade policy present the next and perhaps most significant challenges and more structural challenges for our industry. The world is dividing the trade blocks, NAFTA and North America, the European Union, ASEAN and the Far East, and so on. This slide's a bit busy, but if you look at the center, you will see the key fact about the trade blocks. The GCC countries are not a part of any of them. We are, though, exposed to the decision they are making. For example, in 2014, the European Union more than doubled the custom duty in petrochemical products from Middle East, increasing it from 3% to 6.5%. Those localized train blocks are expanding, and in a way that unlikely to be favorable for our region. Agreement was reached last month on the Trans-Pacific Partnership after seven years of negotiations. The TPP involves 12 Pacific Rim countries, notably not including China, even though China eventually will join. Similar agreement to the TPP is the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership. A broadly similar agreement now under discussion between the United States and the European Union. This increased custom duty on Middle East petrochemicals export to the European Union, which I just referred to, would not apply to U.S. petrochemical exporter for the under this agreement. With improved competitiveness, both from a feedstock perspective and also free trade agreement, the U.S. can 
expect to increase the market share in the European Union, that will inevitably displace some of Middle East export. Therefore, as you can see right now, there are three major challenges. If we keep focus on crude oil price, we are basically running after a mirage because oil price is beyond our control. And this time of a crisis, we have a structural changes and we need to keep in mind those structural changes is not going to change when the crude oil price goes to $100 a year and beyond. So we need to address our challenges differently. And here is some of just highlights without any details. I am pretty sure speakers yesterday touched some of them and also today. But let me just place a few highlights and the importance of those elements. We in the GCC region must act and strengthen our competitive position in this changing business environment and those three, four key elements. The first one is the first achieving we need to improve in our business excellence. Even the best running companies can always do better. We need to look at efficiency, we need to look at productivity, we need to improve in our cost structures, and we need to think from purely business model, otherwise we will not be able to weather the storm of a very tough competition environment. The second element, innovation and technology. In our regions, innovation and technology is something it requires vision, it requires patient, and you need to understand the investment in technology and innovations is a long-term investment. We need to be very creative, not only doing research and hiring talented individuals, probably we need to be aggressive in acquiring technology as well and lead our way for a sustainable future. The third piece is economic diversification into downstream. Downstream manufacturing for the region is going to be very critical for us. We need to be very creative and innovative to help this business for a lot of reasons. First of all, it's going to strengthen our position, expand our market, and we will be able to make sure that we have a very strong local demand. Second, we will also do our part on helping our countries by creating more and high quality of jobs for our citizens. Finally, which is very important, close to my heart, is talent and also capability developments. It is very critical for our industry. Our business is critically technical, requiring well-trained and workforce. Company must partner with a highly sophisticated educational partners. And we need to invest on people developments beyond just a basic technical experience or functional experience. We need to think from an innovative way of managing our future. No one company, no matter and apply resources it might seem, can tackle on its own. The challenges our sector is facing in the GCC, not any single country or company can handle it by itself. This is, must be a collective effort by the people in this room, and we need to handle it with a very collaborative manner. In the meantime, we must do what we can do and what's in our control. We need to achieve business excellence. We need to focus on innovation. We need to diversify our business in a very innovative way. And finally, we need to focus on people developments. Keep in mind, the petrochemical industry here in GCC region has a proud history and many superb achievements. It was created out of the desert sand by people with determinations and vision. We who are here today have a moral obligations to ensure the industry future is exciting and path-breaking at its best. I thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you very much.